Greetings, it is I, Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, welcome. It is time to continue my review of anime series and letting you know how you can use them in your best game. Giving a little bit of information on these series, letting you know if you want to watch them, and then telling you some suggestions on using them in your big eye, small mouth games. So today, I've got four more series. Two more from this year and two from last year. This year, from this season, I have Classic Lloyds and Nobunaga no Shinobi. From last year, I've got Nan Nan Byori and, of course, Monster Musume. But let's start with this year with Classic Lloyds. Now, Classic Lloyds, we focus around these high school students, Kanai and Sosuke. And Kanai has this house that she's been living alone with since her grandmother passed away. But she has Sosuke kind of hanging around there and two other kind of freeloaders sent by her father. These two figures, Mozart and Beethoven. They turn out to be classicaloids. These figures based upon cla classical composers that use this ability called music with a K. <laughs> and they can do things like summon almost magical abilities, stars, summon giant robots. It seems this kind of weird thing. It almost seems supernatural. It probably isn't. Probably more, of you know, pow some kind of strange power based. But that's the entire adventure of it. That they then meet with other classical Lloyds, kind of contend with what they're doing in their own agendas while trying to learn the origins of all the classical Lloyds and the origins of the strange powers they have. What it really means to... So, the genres of this series, it's a comedy. It's very funny. The classicaloid characters are these, like, really comical caricatures of their own classical composers with very eccentric things that are their own sort of abilities. It, it really comes, lends to itself for entertainment. It's also music-based. There's this entire essence of music that kind of goes through the entire series and exists there, this flow of music, because they are classical composers. But I also call it a science fiction because there's strange abilities about, but it seems more science-based than anything. Not magic, not supernatural, science-based. Now I rate this one a four. It's pretty entertaining, it has some great comedy, some unusual characters, and it's pretty funny, so I would recommend it. Now if you're using this in your Bessem game, I recommend 300 points for your characters. You're gonna have a group of classicaloids, of course. Now they're going to be living away with a number of caretakers, and the entire thing is that they're going to be contending with living their own lives with their own kind of goals that you're going to be building. Whether the goals are similar to ones that the characters from the anime have, or ones you make up yourself. You're going to have to deal with other classic Lloyds bothering with you, various other adventures dealing with them, probably the daily lives of your caretakers, the NPC versions of Kane and Sosuke that you're probably going to be bothering a lot, whether they are those characters or ones your game master makes up themselves. And of course, you're going to be trying to learn the origins of yourselves as classical Lloyds, whether it's based on the anime or not, and the depths of the abilities that they have. Now let's move on there and talk about the next series, Nobunaga no Shinobi. Now this series focuses around a young sh uh, shinobi girl, uh, Chidori. Now, she was saved as a child by Nobuna Odo Nobunaga, the historical figure. And so then when she grew up, she, she has dedicated herself to serving as his personal shinobi. So she goes and journeys and basically volunteers herself to assist him. And she then goes on small missions and adventures while dealing with a lot of these classical and historical figures that are kind of comical versions of themselves. Uh, while she's also accompanied by her childhood friend and fellow shinobi, Tukezo. So of course I would call this one a comedy series. There's lots of funny things going on. A lot of the historical figures are very much so caricatures of their actual historical selves and very funny things over. And she has very little common sense even though she is an excellent ninja. Now I'd also call it historical. There's a lot of figures based upon, of course, historical figures here from ancient Japan. And so it has that very well tone of it. And I call it a ninja. It's all about Chidori, this ninja who's doing ninja things in a very silly kind of comical manner, of course. Now I rate this one a five. It's small episodes, but it's really excellent and very funny. Now if you're using this in a Bessem game, I'd recommend 200 points. You're going to be a team of ninja taking the place of Chidori and Tsukezo. It'll be a group of whatever number of characters you have in place of it. They'll be, of course, be working for Oda Nobunaga and doing little missions for him. Doing little things, doing things while dealing with all the various historical figures, the comical versions of them, which could be your game master's own version of them, or the versions from the anime. Up to them what kind of version they're going to build, of course. And, of course, in whatever episode you're 
session you will have, you'll have to deal with probably some kind of small mini mission that will take the place of it. Or maybe a couple of smaller missions that will take it up. Kind of similar to how the anime is all small vignettes. It'll be small vignette episodes of little missions that will oftentimes have very comical overtones. And your characters should reflect that being like, have maybe the lack of common sense of Chidori. Now let's move on and talk about the anime series is from last year. The first one is Nan Nan Gyori, which is actually, we're talking about the second season, but there has been a couple of seasons and other things related to it. So Nan Nan Gyori focuses around this rural town in Japan, far away from any city. Their store is pretty distant away that you can have to go quite for a walk on it. It has very few of the modern conveniences that someone from a city will go to. In fact, it's so small that the school that's there only, which only goes up to the middle school, elementary middle school, only has five students in it from various different grades. That's how many children are the entire town. When people get to a high school age, they have to go away to high school wherever they go to. So our series focuses around Hotaru. She's a girl from Tokyo who's coming into this, to this small town village, and she's adjusting to the life there at this new school with very few people in it. And of course, all the new friends she's meeting there and the various things that they do for country life, the travel, the various events they have, everything like that, as she adjusts to this new life in our kind of eyes of the rural Japan. So the genres of this one is, of course, it's a comedy. They have a lot of silly moments going on, very eccentric characters that are very entertaining to watch. It's slice of life. You were just watching their sort of daily life, going from home and dealing with the home life, going off into school, coming back from it. And we kind of see these slices of the various different characters in their home lives, like the different families that exist there. It's also rural life, I would call it. It's all about this kind of rural, out of the way life in Japan and the small village life, which is kind of disappearing and isn't seen as much anymore in actual Japan. I rate this one a three. Now it's, it's pretty good. I don't jump aboard it as much as I jump aboard other comedy series. Uh, just because it is kind of a little more slower in its comedy and stuff because it is more of a slice of life. But I do find it pretty entertaining and would recommend it. Now, if you're using this in a best game, I recommend 100 points. You're going to make your characters the cast of children that are going to this school. Maybe some of them are from the city. Maybe them for some of a more larger villages or something like that that have moved in at various different points in time. You could have your Hutaro-like character. You might not. You could have that the character would have been there for some period of time. The group of characters should probably be most of, if not all, of the kids there. You could have a couple of NPCs to supplement it, maybe some older kids that go away to high school, and you're going to deal with their daily lives, dealing with them going to school, dealing with the various activities in the rural act. Uh, uh, in the rural communities, going and kind of gathering, you know, wild herbs, dealing with living, uh, staying out in the wild for a little bit, farming, that sort of things, various festivals, that these events that are far away from any modern amenities that a city might have, that there aren't any stores nearby, that you might have to travel pretty far for any big store, there only might be small shops, which might be like a half an hour away, walking from where they normally are living. Something like this that gives a very good feeling of the royal life, and you're going to deal with that daily life while probably adding in some of those comedic elements. So the last one I want to talk about today is, of course, Monster Musume. Now, for this one, about three years ago, uh, Japan revealed that they had good keeping secret the existence of mythological creatures. And they passed this law, basically an exchange act, in order to basically begin to integrate them into more modern day society, these mythological creatures. So now we're many years later, and they basically have exchange programs with them living in like, as exchange students in houses, you almost have to think about that, under guardianship of various families, learning how to integrate society and hoping bringing it back to their own. So meet Kimihito, who didn't sign up for the program at all and has been living at home. Unfortunately, he gets into the situation where he ends up helping out this Lamia girl, Mila, and effectively then becomes her caretaker. And over the course of the series, more and more of these various different species of monster girls ends up effectively getting into situations and he helps them out. And he effectively, his home gets expanded with more and more of them. Now, each of them has a different relationship and so likes him to different degrees. Some of them really like him a lot, others less. But then he also gets, has encounters with, of course, the group that's kind of looking over this entire situation and then other monster people that are out there oftentimes of course female but others of course too and it builds in the situation of not only his relationship with each of the ones that are living in his household but helping them live almost in this modern life when they have societies and bodies that were originally built to live in this normal world and sort of adapting to that and helping them learn in order to kind of integrate into the society. 
So, of course, if I'm talking about the genres, it's a harem. <laughs> That's the first thing you really have to say about it. It really is. It's more than one girl likes him out of a group of them. Of all these monster girls, they really do. All of them like him to a different degree, but there are some of them that really like him a lot more than others. It's a comedy series. There's a lot of comedic situations. He gets really beat up. He, he always is this really nice guy. It's really hard to get him angry. He always does the right thing. That's kind of one of the reasons they always like him, because he treats them like normal girls, even though they technically are monsters. And uh, so a lot of comedic situations come out of that one. And it's the Monster Girl, which seems to be a more new, new genre that's sort of come out there. So that's what the other last genre is, Monster Girls. They are female versions of various types of monsters, which are the kind of ideal of the group. In fact, there has been sort of this idea of the genre that has happened in the past, but this one sort of hits the nail on the head a lot. Now I rate this one a three. I, li I do like the comedy of it. It can, can be get a little... Uh, sexualized a little too much occasionally, I think, uh, a little too much etchy at times, but it's not bad. It doesn't it doesn't hit you too much sometimes. And so the, the other various comedy and the and kind of relationships kind of is interesting otherwise. Now, if you're using this in a Bessem game, I recommend 300 points. You're going to make your characters monsters, whether you're going specifically monster girl to mimic the anime or not. That's up to your game master whether they're going to go up. But they're basically going to be a group together in one family and in one in one household. And they will have some kind of NPC that will be the kind of focal point of them, the human, token human, who whether they literally like the person or not will be up to you kind of building if it's going to be a kind of harem anime based with the PCs being the members of it or not that's completely up to how you build the game but regardless the characters will be dealing with integrating into basically normal japanese society normal human society while being these unusual monsters and having their own basically family issues or societal issues based upon whatever monster they are you could either use societies and monsters from the anime which they have established a large number of them or you could come up with some on your own of course they might also deal with some of the administration problems is going on with the entire setup or possible other monsters that are out there, probably either friendly or unfriendlies, but they would have little adventures and be dealing with them, possibly visiting various places where there might be other monsters or going on various different travels. So that's it for today. I introduced you to, of course, four new series that you can either watch to enjoy them or use them in your Bessem games. I just gave you the little review of them, gave you some suggestions for the Bessem game. I hope you enjoy them as much as I enjoyed these series. But if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe to support for the channel, the empire, and the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon, linked in the description below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.